on this segment of the program. Today marks the ninth anniversary of the Saudi-led aggression against Yemen, where Riyadh and some of its Arab and Western allies failed to achieve any of their objectives. The leader of Ansar al movement has praised the Yemeni nation for their resilience and unity in the face of the war. In a televised address on Monday, Abdul Malik al-Houthi denounced the aggression against his country, saying, the goal of unjust and treacherous war was to destroy Yemen. He emphasized that Saudi Arabia's plan was to occupy Yemen and undermine the rights of its people. Houthi said the war resulted in uh, the death or injury of over 50,000 civilians, mostly women and children. Saudi Arabia, along with some of its regional allies, and backed by the West, launched a war on Yemen in March 2015 with the aim to reinstate a friendly regime there. Years of bombing campaign and blockade worsened the condition of the Yemeni people. According to the UN Refugee Agency, Yemen remains one of the world's worst humanitarian crises, despite a ceasefire. Joining us on this edition of the News Review, we have uh, Press TV's Abdul Latif al who is joining us from the Yemeni capital, Sana'a, and also we have Director of Center for Counter-Hegemonic Studies, Mr. Tim Anderson, who's joining us from Sydney. Uh, gentlemen, welcome to the program. Let's start off with uh, Abdul Latif in the Yemeni capital, Sana'a. It's uh, the ninth anniversary of this Saudi-led uh, aggression, and uh, just recently, the leader of the Amsola movement, Abdul Malik al-Houthi, he made a keynote address uh, commemorating this uh, this day, and he spoke of how this war, this brutal war, and this cruel siege on Yemen has failed to break the will and the resilience of the Yemeni people. Tell us more about that, please. Thank you so much. You know, today is the ninth anniversary, and multiple uh, uh, official and popular events are being held here in Sana'a and also in other cities. The people are celebrating this day. You know, today, after nine years of war and siege, the Yemenis now are stronger than ever. The uh, uh, Yemeni people and the Yemeni army are now facing uh, British uh, forces, facing America, facing Israel. So they believe that if it's not for the war that was launched uh, against Yemen by Saudi Arabia and its allies, which was originally planned by the U.S. and the U.K., the uh, Yemeni army would not be able to face now or today the U.S. and the uh, U.K. Uh, the Yemeni army managed to develop and to improve its capabilities, to improve its weapons. Uh, you know, today we heard uh, about the hypersonic missiles that are being possessed by the Yemeni army and the Yemeni uh, armed forces uh, will use them uh, to attack, to, uh, 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 you know, to chase the uh, western ships in the Red Sea and Gulf of Aden and also in the Indian Ocean. So the Yemeni army is now stronger than ever and uh, the Yemeni people believe that this is uh, after the nine years of war and siege and uh, the humanitarian situ situation today, I'm sorry, the humanitarian situation today is still very bad in the country. You know, the World Food Program suspended its activities a few months ago. The uh, war did not end completely, you know, the negotiations are still in the process. Uh, nothing happened, you know, for two years now, since the beginning of the truce, uh, nothing happened. You know, people say, we want the war to be back or the war to be ended. But, but being like that, we don't know what we have to do. The uh, salaries of the people would not pay yet the um, economic uh, situation is very bad so the people here they want uh, something to happen to move this case to stop the war completely not just you know to have a truce and to stop the military activities only they want to war the war to be completely ended this is what they demand today in the uh, public and official events in the Sana'a and other cities Tim Anderson in Sydney, it's the ninth anniversary of uh, the Saudi-led war on Yemen. Uh, other than uh, the death of so many uh, Yemenis and hunger uh, and famine and this humanitarian catastrophe that has unfolded uh, in Yemen, what has this war achieved? Well, the, the war which was launched, as you say, nine years ago was um, at a point when the what is now the National Sal Salvation Government, a coalition led by Ansarallah, was about to take over Aden, which is still held by some of the Emirati-backed um, opposition groups. But they've been defecting to the National Salvation Government as a result of these actions in support of Palestine. So the actions in support of Palestine have rallied 
the Yemeni people to the government in Sana'a. And the problem is that internationally, there's been very little recognition. Uh, but I think that um, the, 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 the Saudis have realized that they failed, so they don't want to pursue uh, as an agent of the US any further this war. They're looking to uh, avoid further um, misadventures in that area. But in the meantime, there's very little international recognition of the National Salvation Government. What, what I think is very important is that just recently, and as a result of the Anglo-American attacks on, on Yemen, the missile attacks condemned by Russia and China, that the Yemeni, the effective Yemeni government has been talking to Russia and China with the, uh, with the outcome being that there are some political um, gains going on there. And I hope it will be the case that Russia and China begin to recognize the National Salvation Government at the moment. The US and the people that have been involved in the attack on Yemen have been calling them Houthi rebels as though they're some marginal group and not really representing the most of the population in Yemen. Mr. Anderson is saying with you as a result of uh, the years of this blockade uh, on uh, Yemen, uh, the UN Refugee Agency has said that the situation uh, in Yemen at the moment remains one of the world's worst humanitarian crises despite a ceasefire. <laughs> being in place, is it safe to say that the international community has failed the people of Yemen? They, they shut their eyes. You know, there was no dissent at the Security Council when they, uh, over the last nine years when they passed these resolutions uh, imposing the land, air and sea blockade on the country because it was supposedly a threat to international peace. In fact, the, uh, the, the Unstral-led coalition government has been fighting al-Qaeda groups, which are, of course, backed by the Emiratis and the Saudis and the U.S. on the, on the Arabian Peninsula. So there's this, uh, the international community has certainly failed them, betrayed them, really, in terms of the Security Council. I think, um, I hope there's a turnaround coming with all of the appreciation, of course, for the actions that, despite this starvation, despite this terrible siege on the Yemeni people, they still have the will to fight on behalf of their brothers and sisters in Gaza, and that's really made a big impression on the world and apparently also recently on Russia and China. Okay, we're going to have to wrap up this segment um, as uh, we're fresh out of time. Thanks to Abdul Latif al Moshali, our correspondent joining us from the Yemeni capital, Sana, and also thanks to the Director of Center for Counter Hegemonic Studies, Mr. Tim Anderson, joining us from Sydney.